By now you should have opened the Won't You Be My Urchant in Cami, and you should have read this very first page. I'm going to help you get started on the rest of this, but I am not going to do it all for you. So what you're going to do after you've read that first page is we're going to identify or point out any changes, trends, or differences we see in your graph. So that's the graph down here. We're going to use the sentences below to help us see any changes, trends, or differences in your graph, but be sure to use an arrow from each observation pointing to where the observation is shown on the bar graph. So. For example, the very first one, I see a lot of blank growing when there are urchins in the bin. So if I'm looking at this, we've got sea urchins present are the pink and no sea urchins present are the blue. So if we're trying to figure out, I see a lot of blank growing when there are urchins in the bin. So when we're talking about urchins in the bin, there's If we're talking about, I see a lot of blank growing when there are urchins in the bin. So I see a lot of corals because this corals is the number. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my text. I'm gonna write corals growing when there are urchins in the bin because our corals are on the left-hand side. And so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna draw using the drawing feature and I'm gonna take this and where do I see it? Well. If I'm drawing, you can kind of see it right here that there's a high number of corals when there's sea urchins in the bin. You need to go ahead and answer these next two and draw where you see them in the chart. Now this next one, it says scientific question. So this is what they were testing. How does the presence of urchins affect corals? So what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for an observation which can then be tested with an experiment or other types of studies. So what you're trying to do, it's trying to figure out what Sarah thought was going to happen. So you need to go back into the reading, so that's up here, go back into the reading and underlining in pink what Sarah thought was going to happen, so her hypothesis. Then circling in red what the control in this experiment was. So the control has nothing changed in it. So go do that now. So now this is on page 46 and we're going to go ahead and give it a title of Won't You Be My Urchant? And it says you're going to include corals, urchins, and algae in our food web. So we're going to go ahead and include that. I'm just going to write corals, urchins, and our last one was algae. And it says write out the name of the species in each box. So I need to put box or boxes around them. says, add arrows to connect the boxes. Arrows represent the interactions between species in an ecosystem. For example, you can use arrows to show whom eats whom, who eats whom, or to show competition between different species. Use the direction of the arrows to show the direction of energy flow or other relationships. So hint, look at the third paragraph in the reading to help you. And it says, once you've drawn your arrows, label them with the type of interaction. For example, label the arrow with the words eaten by. If the arrow connects a species to the species that consumes it or competes for space, that connects the arrow to the species that it competes with for space. So I'm gonna go ahead and look in my third paragraph, like it says. So one, two, three. First line, corals compete with large types of algae like seaweed for space. So, Corals, I'm going to draw an arrow, compete with algae for space, and it said to label it. So I'm going to write compete for space. And then 
what we need to do, what you're going to have to try to figure out, is there should be at least one more interaction. At least one more interaction. Probably more like two. That would be my hint to you. Probably more like two.